Hey, welcome back to Carla Prusa MMA. I'm Carla Prusa, and I am with Bellator vet Mr. Darian Abbey ahead of his headlining XF XFC 50 contest against Tim Johnson. Uh, Darian, we're only about six days out from the fight. It's right around the corner. Um, what is the mindset like right now being at the end of training camp here? Um, I'm ready to go more than anything. Uh, at this point, I think it's just a waiting game, you know. Uh, I think this is the worst part of the camp is when you get down to the last few days and you're just ready to go, but you kinda, you're kind of on the clock first. But um, camp's been good. Uh, there's four of us that was fighting within uh, like six or seven days of one another. Had two guys on PFL this week, and then there's two of us. My buddy uh, Bailey's fighting for the CFFC heavyweight title on Friday as well. So we've all been uh, getting after it. Sometimes when you're in camp with guys that aren't got fights going on, it's kind of hard to keep guys in the gym sometimes. But when you're all kind of pushing for a goal, We've all been uh, we've all been on task and we're all ready to go. Do you train over at Killcliffe uh, FC with some great fighters? I mean, some guys you mentioned in there, um, you know, Chase Sherman guy you train with, uh, Linton uh, Bissell who was just on the PFL the other night. Um, great guys, Henry Hoof over there, Michael Chandler. I mean, the names go on and on. Um, mm -hmm. How did you get to Killcliffe and how do you think it enhances your game? Um, actually, I fought Steve Mowry. That was my Bellator and my professional debut. <clears throat> and then um, we kind of just linked up on Instagram and uh, he uh, got was able to get me in and I moved down here in 2020, end of 2020. And um, I've been doing really well for myself since. So. so next Friday, you're taking on Tim Johnson, a guy who's had multiple fights in the UFC. He's had multiple fights in Bellator. Um, if you know the sport, very respectful name. Uh, does a guy like that, does that excite you? Does that give you some motivation that you get a headline a show and put, fight a guy like that? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me and where I'm at in my career, I personally, I mean, we'll see what happens next week, but I think it's the one that kind of pushes me through. But um, we'll see. Um, I can't really focus on that. Right now I'm just focusing on getting in there and uh, taking him out. Now, this whole XFC promotion, they've done many shows in the past. I mean, obviously we're at the 50th one here, but uh, new ownership. And uh, it really looks like this card is absolutely stacked. I mean, you have you guys as the main event. Pearl Gonzalez is on here. Emmanuel Sanchez, former Bellator guy. Hannah Goldie. I mean, this thing is absolutely loaded. Um, is that pretty cool to be able to be part of a stacked fight card like this? 100%. It's always good when the card's going to be full of uh, action fights because then it's kind of like, all right, now you got to go out there and put on a show as well after all these other people just put on a show. So I like to, that's my favorite thing to do is put on a show. Uh, we also got one of my best friends and my training partner, uh, Dylan Sullivan, on the card. And uh, so that that alone puts me in a different kind of mindset too, have, being able to have a guy in there that I, I know, love, and trust. And uh, he's going to go to battle with me as well. So I'm looking forward to the whole card. You know, I've talked about this with some other guys in the past. When you have teammates who are fighting on the card with you, how do you view it? Do you view it as pros or do you view it as cons depending on how his performance goes? I think it's it can be a pro regardless because even if for some reason he doesn't win, it to me it's going to be more motivation. Like, okay, well, now that I'm about to go show them – who we are, you know, like I got, I'm going to make up for it. But then if he wins, it's also like, okay, now I got to go out before my best friend and put on a, put on an even better show than he did. So I think either way, there's no cons in it. Um, for me personally, other people probably have different opinions, but that's my personal opinion on the matter. You know, a lot of people are excited about this main event. Obviously, anytime you get two heavyweights like you guys involved in something, uh, they know there are going to be a lot of fireworks. I mean, you have shown it in your game bred bare knuckle career throughout your career. Uh, you have some power. You have some pop. Uh, yes, are you sir. expecting to go in here and be a very striking heavy contest uh, that potentially may not go that long? I plan on going in there and just being an MMA fighter. Um, I know Tim likes to grab a hold of guys, but that's fine. I've, I train with some really great grapplers who um, over the last few years have got me really, really, really prepared for any type of grappling situation so um even if it hits the mat i'm not too worried about it um but with that said i'm always looking to punch a hole through somebody's chest or face so that's what the goal is to get in and get out but i'm prepared for wherever it goes 
So you were supposed to fight uh, Kent Mathuliello, and I believe that was the end of last year. It was supposed to be a title fight. Um, that it's one got good. canceled. Um, yeah. What was the reaction to that? Um, what was that situation all about? Um, that was a hard one to swallow, man. I I think I was more prepared for that fight than I ever have been before, other than this fight. Um, at the time, I just I fell sick on, like, Tuesday. I got real sick to my stomach and uh, was getting sick. But then Wednesday, I started, like, the throwing up and stuff stopped. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll be fine by Friday. I got to Utah. I felt fine-ish. Um, then I woke up Thursday for weigh-ins, and it was like, damn, it punched me back in the face. So I tried to tough it out. I told the promoter about it. Um, woke up on fight day, got an IV, tried to rehydrate and stuff. I just Ultimately, it was I was in a spot where it was like, it's a tough fight. And um, I'm not 100%. And I'm at that point in my career where I, if I'm not able to breathe in a fight that's going to be a tough fight that I'm going to need to be able to breathe, especially at elevation, I just I had to pull the trigger. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my career and life um, to make that decision. But I had to do what I had to do. Were you pretty excited to be able to, you know, months after that, get the opportunity to headline something like this to kind of maybe bounce back from it? 100% man it's anytime you get the chance to headline a show uh, headline a card it's kind of like a confidence booster it's like oh these guys believe that you you're you're worth it you know to, to a draw you make attention and I think anytime I get in the cage I'm I'm main event material anyway I go in there and I try to like I said I put on a show you know I'm trying to trying to hurt you from the start to finish either you finish me or I'm finishing you that's kind of my mentality there ain't no judges in the matter you know, with the victory over Tim, do you feel like you're closer to getting to the bigger shows, maybe the UFCs, the Bellators, the PFLs? I 100%, um, especially at my weight. You know, they're. I think the heavyweights in the UFC are you know, okay, but um, I think they're screaming that they need new talent, and I think that my look, my size, my, my fighting ability is a very marketable uh, thing, so I'm, and I've got a pretty good personality if you get me on a microphone um so i uh i think so i go in here take care of business like i think i should and do it fairly fairly quick it might be the one you know but uh again i'm trying not to even focus on the after i just gotta get i gotta get through i gotta get through tim first you know and then worry about the rest later so you've been competing professionally now in mixed martial arts uh, I believe now for about four or five years as an amateur, it's been six, seven years. Uh, how did you get into this crazy world of combat sports? Um, I was actually a basketball player, um, believe it or not. And when that was kind of, I kept getting uh, injured in basketball. So I uh, ultimately was like, yeah, I'm sick of this. And um, I was still like 22 and I was young, I was athletic. And I'm like, I want to use... I was, I was moving furniture at the time, and I was like, I'm not trying to destroy my athleticism moving furniture. So I um, always enjoyed fighting. I always said myself as a kid, if for some reason basketball didn't work, um, that I would give a run at fighting. And um, in the 2016, I was in some rough places mentally, doing drugs and making some real bad decisions. And... Uh, I ran into a guy that I worked with that did it, and he trained at a gym with my boy. Uh, he's a vet as well, Jordan Hinman. And I knew Jordan, so I reached out to Jordan and was like, hey, I want to start training. He's like, hit up the owner. I hit up the owner. And then that next week, it all began, and that was in, like, September of 2016. And here we are, main event in the card in Florida fucking seven years later, man. it's it's And then potentially if I win, I'm – knocking on the door of getting into the UFC that I never even dreamed about doing as a kid, you know, it's like, it's just crazy. It happened so fast, but also it's been a long fucking road. Do you feel like mixed martial arts has helped added maybe some more discipline and structure to your life that has helped you grow as an individual? Oh, hundred percent, man. hundred percent. The moment I started doing fight, uh, I started fighting, the drugs stopped, the, the going out and doing dumb shit stopped because I didn't want to disappoint the people that were around me. And you get humbled really fast, you know, like before I started fighting, I thought I was the toughest man in the world sometimes, you know, and then you get punched in the face 
by a fucking 170 pound dude when you're sparring and your nose starts bleeding and it's like oh i'm not who i thought i was you learn really fast and then you fall in love with the fact of getting better uh, and the fact of hey there's guys out there that might be able to beat you up and you might be able to defend your family so like the whole thought of everything and the outcome of everything has been pretty dope man you know, a lot of people in the year 2024 watch mixed martial arts. It is something that is very mainstream. It's very culturally accepted, but very few people understand the sacrifices that a mixed martial artist must make, especially guys in your situation, other fighters who are fighting on the regional scene. You're not making thousands upon thousands and thousands of dollars fighting. A lot of times for individuals like yourself have to work a 40 hour a week job. They have families, they have kids, and they have to fight on the side. Um, how do you face the grind? How do you face that balance and how do you get through it? Man, it's just the end goal, you know, you just got to keep it hind in hindsight of, so I don't, I get a little personal. I don't get to see my son very much because of this life. You know, he um, lives a few hours away and then I work on the weekends at night. I'm a bar back. I work at a bar and security. So like my hours that I can see him are uh, very limited. So the thought of getting to the UFC, getting to the, these bigger fights where I'm making more money to where I can ultimately stop working, you know, and see him and be able to do stuff, that that hunger, that is a, a real big driving force. And then just the glory and the leaving a legacy is also, I always want to do that. Having my name etched in history for something, you know, being remembered for something, having my family and my son, every, everybody, to remember my last name of Abby, you know, that, those drive me, those type of things. In addition to traditional glove mixed martial arts, you've also competed in the bare knuckle MMA platform for uh, Jorge Masvidal, Dean Tool. Um, what drew you to doing that? And what were the reactions like from people when you told me you were in a fight with no gloves on? Um, my manager, man, he hit me up randomly one day at, I just got done training and he was like, Hey, you want to do bare knuckle? And I was like, I mean, depends on the money. And he told me to pay and told me the opponent. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So then I, I tried it. I remember I told my family and my mom, she's always been like, yeah, let's, I want to go, I want to watch. But as soon as I told her I was doing bare knuckle, she said, I, like, literally it was, I'm not watching. And she definitely didn't watch. Um, she watched highlights. She called me and talked to me that day and stuff. But as far as watching it, she wouldn't want to do it. My dad didn't want to watch it. Um, the second time they did it after they saw me do it the first time they watched, but that first time I did it, they were not having it. And, uh, but it was fun. I think it made me better in the aspect mentally, because like, if you can mentally prepare yourself for taking a bare knuckle punch or getting ground and bound with no fucking gloves on, that's scary, you know? And then I think the first time I did it, I was the co-main event. So I had to watch like 10 people go in front of me, all getting, coming back totally different than what they did when they first one out there guys lumped up and I'm like damn like what did I sign up for but uh in the end it's it's not bad like it I guess it's just like getting kneed or elbowed but me I feel like I'm very defensive good head movement I get out of the way of punches so I honestly have yet to really take in a full bare knuckle blow so uh I've been grateful for that aspect but yeah it was fun I enjoyed it so you've kind of been back and forth between bare knuckle, between traditional glove to MMA. Do you find that as a challenge at all? Because obviously when you find bare knuckle, you may want to control the power a little bit because you don't want to break the hands when you have the gloves. Totally different story. Is that make it any harder when you're going back and forth with it? No, I think it makes me better because um, now when I do MMA, I'm not throwing uh, straight power, right? I'm, uh, I'm still placing my shots but I'm fast. I'm very fast. So um, me just placing my punches where they need to go is good enough. And then when I have to punch you, punch a hole through your fucking face, then I still can do that if I have to. Now your last fight in uh, the game, Brad Bare Knuckle platform, you fought on the uh, Roy Nelson, Dylan Kleckler card over mm -hmm. in Miami. You took on Frank Tate. Wonderful mm -hmm. performance. You were able to finish him early in that round, uh, first round. Uh, going into the contest, did you have a feeling that you were going to end it with the hands? Like, can you just walk me through the finish a little bit? Um, Kind of. I My game plan was – I honestly – I don't think my game plan could have worked any perfectly. It was literally come out, take him down for half a round, make him tired, 
and then not like let him up, but make it make it, let him work himself up, and then punish him as soon as he gets up because he's gonna be tired. He hadn't been in there for a while. He was a little older, so like that was the game plan, and it worked perfectly. So, um, yeah, that 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 one was exactly how we wanted it to go. You haven't had an MMA contest in about a year. Mm-hmm. You have when you're dealing with a layoff like this. What are some important things you try to do? in training camp to prevent ring rust? Uh, spar. I just – I spar probably three days a week at least, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Sometimes it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. And I'm doing at least – I mean, we go back and forth between three minutes and five minutes. But five-minute rounds, I'm doing at least 10 rounds a week. And then three-minute three minute rounds, I'm probably doing at least 15 to 20 a week. So the – the sparring is a big part of that. The wrestling, staying in shape, and then, uh, yeah. Honestly, I think the sparring was what does it. How excited are you to be able to get back in there? I can't contain. I, I'm trying to contain it, but like it's, I'm, I'm ready to go, man. Because I know how big this fight can be for me if I go in there and perform the way I should. So I'm excited for the moment. I'm excited to seize the moment and uh, take what's mine. It's my time, and I'm ready to prove it. And now with the big victory, you mentioned earlier that you have a personality. Um, should we expect maybe some fireworks on the mic if you win the main event? I got a few things to say, but not necessarily like – I'm not – like I don't say dumb things like, oh, fuck this guy, fuck this, you know. Um, but um, I like to be a little comical. You know, if you ask me a question, I try to be a little smart-assy when you answer me. But I also have a few things to say to uh, – Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard if I go and finish this guy. So um, that's what I'm focusing on in, in that post-fight uh, interview. What would it mean for you, Darian, to be able to fight in the UFC? It's a goal that I never even thought was possible growing up. You know, I was so focused on basketball and then, like, seeing the UFC. It was like, oh, that'd be dope to be a UFC fighter. But, like, being this close and it being a very high possibility, it's now it's like, damn, this is uh, this is surreal. I'm I'm very blessed behind for for everything I've been given as far as uh, athletically and yeah, man, and I'm I'm ready to get there and show how good I really am. All right, last question for you, Darian. In the perfect world, what goes on when you take on Tim Johnson April twelfth and later? <laughs> In a perfect world, I go out there, touch him once or twice and he goes down, you know, um, I've done it before. I've done it multiple times before. So I know I'm definitely capable of doing so. So in a real world, I go out there, I get the job done early round one. Well, Darian, thanks for talking to me today. I wish you nothing but the best one. Thank you, brother.